The Amazing Flagella of the M01 Bacterium by Malcolm Bowden There is a most interesting article in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science entitled Architecture of a Flagella Apparatus in the Fast-Swimming Magnetotactic Bacterium M01 by Ruan et al. The team had examined the bacteria M01. It has a minute egg-shaped body, 2 micrometers long by 1.5 micrometers diameter. A micrometer is one millionth of a meter. There is a flagella at each end, 3 micrometers long and 2 nanometers diameter. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. If you laid 900 of them end to end, they would stretch across the 1.8 millimeter diameter of a pinhead. It was found to have an amazingly intricate flagella that enables it to move much faster than most other bacteria. Each flagella is a sheath that surrounds seven filaments that all rotate in the same direction. They are twisted in a spiral along their length, so that when they spin, they thrust the water in one direction and the bacteria is propelled in the opposite direction. Scientists have puzzled how these closely packed filaments could rotate so fast in the same direction, yet not generate huge friction between them. Were they to touch, their surfaces would be rotating in opposite directions. They examined them using very advanced techniques. The secret of their ability to rotate very fast with little friction is that between each of the seven filaments they have 24 tiny fibrils which also rotate but in the opposite direction. They act like small gear wheels between larger gears. Thus there is little friction within the sheath. The filaments spin at hundreds of revolutions per second and you begin to see this as we speed up the rotations. Enclosing the filaments in a sheath increases the propulsion by nine times compared with an unsheathed bundle and three times the power of the unsheathed bundle of salmonella and E. coli. This very efficient high-powered structure enables the bacteria to travel at 300 micrometers per second. This bacteria is one of a class of the very simplest of cells known as prokaryotes that have ever been found. They multiply by the DNA dividing and the cell then splitting in two. Evolutionists have claimed that they have found prokaryote cells and the more complex eukaryotes in the Precambrian. This is the strata devoid of any animal life just under the Cambrian, in which massive numbers of complex life forms suddenly appear. Even evolutionists call this sudden appearance of life the Cambrian Explosion. It contains thousands of species of very complex animal life, such as ammonites, belemnites, etc. Evolutionists have claimed that small marks in the Precambrian are cells, because he badly needs some form of life before the immense outpouring of the complex life in the Cambrian. Personally, I do not think that they have found any real cells in the Precambrian. If evolutionists consider the first cells were prokaryotes, then the M01 bacteria is one of them. The question then arises, how could such a complex mechanism as the M01 flagella be one of the first cells to exist? Surely no sensible person would accept that it simply came together by a series of chance happenings. But let us continue to demonstrate just how complex this flagella is. 
One expert said, Typically, any geared engines have no more than two motors. The best we could do in a helicopter is three engines and a multiple gearbox to sink the engines. This simple bacterium has nearly the same number of parts as a Boeing 747, 6 million, which, like the aircraft, work together perfectly. But these parts allow the bacterium to do something the 747 cannot do, that is, multiply itself. Note the M01 bacterium has three more motors than the Boeing model. The unsheathed flagella of the Salmonella and E. coli bacteria motors can drive them at a speed of 15 body lengths per second. A cheetah achieves a land speed of 25 body lengths per second in comparison, and that's in air, not fluid. The M01 bacteria can swim a massive 150 body lengths in one second. It has been called the Ferrari of flagella due to its high speed. Now I ask the viewer to pause at this point. Evolutionists would have us believe that chemicals in the primeval soup gradually collected together and formed themselves into simple cells. These are portrayed as a wavy edge shape with a black dot representing the nucleus in the middle. What could be simpler? Yet here we have a drawing that gives just a few of the very basic organs that are in all cells. Every cell is phenomenally complex, highly organized and very efficient. In the M01 bacteria, we have one of the simplest cells ever found, a prokaryote. Yet it already has a very complex flagella with many moving parts that enable it to swim extremely fast. I ask the perfectly reasonable question, how could this highly efficient organism have arisen by a million small chance mutations to produce this amazing result? Yet, here we have even the simplest cell as a highly complex bundle of seven filaments and 24 fibrils that greatly reduce friction and allows the bacteria to swim very fast indeed. If these prokaryote cells are the simplest cells ever found, I challenge any evolutionist to explain why not a single earlier and simpler bacteria has ever been found that could have been a precursor. Their confident claim that a very simple cell was formed first that later became more complex is smashed by this tiny but very complex bacteria. I ask the perfectly reasonable question, how could this highly efficient organism have arisen by a million small chance mutations to produce this amazing result? Surely it shouts at any reasonable person that this bacteria has been designed by a highly intelligent designer. This bacteria is not the only example of highly complex organisms, some of which are found in very early life forms. I have shown in other videos. 1. The kinesian motors in every cell. Compounds made in one place may be used in another place. These motors place the chemical on their head and walk along the microtubules to the place where they are needed. 2. The repair of DNA in cells where it has been damaged by ultraviolet rays. The damaged section is snipped out and the correct pairs of nucleotides automatically connect up. 3. The highly complex network of chemical compounds in the human body. Just one small defective compound can have a disastrous effect upon a person's health.
all of these examples really had to be designed right first time, as it is impossible to accept that any one of them could have been put together part by part, slowly, over millions of years. Anyone who insists that nevertheless evolution did actually take place is not just being blind to the truth, but willfully blind. Indeed, it is obvious that no matter what good, reliable, scientific evidence is presented to them, they must dismiss it, because evolution is the only theory that allows them to claim God does not exist. Therefore, as there is no afterlife or final punishment, they can do whatever they want to do. This is the root cause of the frantic and ferocious opposition there is to the creation evidence. What about those Christians who hold to theistic evolution? It seems to me that many of them, faced with the good scientific evidence for creation, they nevertheless feel compelled to publicly give lip service to evolution simply because they fear the ridicule and fierce opposition of their non-Christian fellow workers, particularly if they are in a field of science. They therefore keep quiet. A well-known scientist who has written in defense of theistic evolution was at one of my talks. Here was his chance to ridicule the creation evidence, but he asked not a single question and left fairly quickly at the end. Every man will one day stand before a holy God, and he will separate the sheep from the goats. Even for Christians, they will be tested by fire, and all the wood, hay and stubble will be burnt out of them, as we read in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 11 to 15. This will include the foolish adherence to theistic evolution and everything that they strongly believe in that is contrary to the real truth regarding creation, doctrine and beliefs. Only then will they find just how willfully blind they have been. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for your attention.